What's up, sons? It's Blind Rod with Sonvatech once again, and I already was going to come home tonight and start overclocking the i7-8700K, and I figured why not bring you guys along and show you guys how to overclock an i7-8700K on an ASRock motherboard. We're actually going to be using some Windows utilities that I don't always recommend, but for figuring out the finalized settings, we're going to use that, and then we'll go into the BIOS and set it in there and uninstall the software after that. Without further ado, let's hop into it. Okay, so to catch you guys up on the cooler, it's a Noctua NHD15, and that's an air cooler, one of the best out. We already did a video on that over here. Obviously, the first thing that we're going to note here is if you're going to be overclocking this CPU or this processor, that you use some pretty hefty cooling. Something like a Hyper 212 is not going to be sufficient, and you need to keep that in mind when purchasing this CPU. The other note is that if you enable XMP profile on most motherboards, some are taking this away. However, on most motherboards, it will automatically enable something called... <laughs> It will automatically enable something called MCE, which is multi-core enhancement, and you do not want this turned on at all, pretty much ever. Pretty much if you're gonna hop into the BIOS and change anything and enable XMP, make sure you go back in and set all the voltages to standard. At the very least, set all of that to stock, and then come back in later for the overclocking, which we're gonna go over right now. Okay, so hopping right into this, we do want to go ahead and get our base benchmarks. We have Cinebench here already. Currently, the system is running at, and we don't really want Ida64 this time. Currently, the system is running at 1.25 volts at 4.8 gigahertz, and we have not pushed it since finding that. 1.35 volts appears to bring at least, or it was 1.38 volts, but with the NCE, it was pushing that voltage all the way up there and getting a little crazy. If you guys open a browser window and just look for the ASRock Z370, you can hop in and go to the support tab and click the download button. In here, there actually is an ASRock A tuning utility and the reason I like using this especially for videos or just benchmarking in general is typically these days you don't need to reboot every time you apply an overclock and this is going to allow us to basically be able to do all of the overclocking within the operating system itself provided we don't crash and get us closer and closer to us finding the final overclock. So once it's done downloading, you can just right click and select extract all if you don't have 7-zip. If you have 7-zip, you can just copy me here. I'm gonna say extract here. Hop into the A-tuning and run the setup. It's pretty straightforward. Once it's finished, we're just gonna launch it right out of there, right out of the gate. And so this is the ASRock A-tuning utility. It does work pretty well in my experience. However, sometimes it might not on some systems and you, if you have some issues I'm probably not the best support I would point you towards ASRock but like I said I haven't really ever had any issues with it so far in operation mode it has performance standard and power saving that you can select from I don't recommend any of these at this point I definitely recommend hopping over to Overclock Tweaker. Now in Overclock Tweaker, interestingly enough, you'll see that we already have, it's already pulled all of the settings from the BIOS, which is super awesome. So we have already at 4.8 gigahertz at 1.25 volts. We have the DRAM voltage at 1.35. I don't know if you can actually adjust any, doesn't look like you can adjust any memory settings in here though. But this is going to be the tool I recommend to get started with. Of course, once you're done, we'll go apply it in the BIOS, and I probably would just recommend uninstalling this. But it's very, very handy for just getting the overclocks done. So right now, let's get a base benchmark run in Cinebench. If we click over to System Info in the A tuning, it should be able to pull all of our frequencies and temperatures here. So I'm just going to go off of that temperature so I don't really have to run anything else. And we're going to run the CPU test. Let's make sure we take it out of single core. So you see here we hit about 76C while running Cinebench and we have a score of 1536. 
The next step that we're going to want to do is just go ahead and bump us up on the CPU ratio by 1 to 4.9 gigahertz. Leave the voltage alone for now and click run again on Cinebench. I'm not checking temperatures at this point because I am fully aware that at 1.25 volts we're fine. We'll check it again if we have to up the voltage. So our score went up from the previous score about 20 points, meaning that we're actually good. There's no nothing else going on there. And we were successful at running Cinebench. So now we're gonna bump up to five gigahertz. Okay, I definitely forget to hit apply on that one. So we're gonna hit apply again. We're actually locking up. So now we've locked up the system. So we know that 1.25 volts at five gigahertz is not enough. So we're going to go ahead and reset the system and try to increase our voltage a little bit. So at this point we're fully aware that 1.25 volts isn't going to be enough. To try to stay as low as possible I'm just going to go up 0 .1, 0 0.01 at a time. So we're going to go to 1.26 and then we're going to bump to 5.0 and click apply. This time we did get past the apply step. So now I'm going to go to the system info. Oh, and then we locked right there. So we're going to have to bump the voltage even more right after this reboot. So at this point, we know that 1.26 was not enough. So we're going to go up to 1.27 and to 5 gigahertz and click apply. And now we'll try to run. This time we got a blue screen, so we made it a little bit further. But yes, that does mean that we're going to have to go up even more on voltage. At a certain point, we'll have to stop on this particular CPU. I think 1.35 would be our absolute maximum cap. So unfortunately, if we can't get to 5 gigahertz until then, it's just going to be what it is. And we'll be stuck with a 4.9 gigahertz unless we get somewhere else with it. So once again, we're going to go to the overclock tweaker. I'm going to throw our voltage up to 1.28 now and CPU ratio to 5.0. And click apply and then click run on the CPU and once again it has crashed on us okie dokie so at this point I'm just gonna go for gold at 1.3 volts at 5 gigahertz click apply and pop over to system info just to keep track of the temperature since we have significantly increased the voltage we'll see if we can actually get through on this one this time not with single threaded and a blue screen so what we're going to check real quick before we go back in is to make sure that we have line load calibration dialed in on the motherboard and it is applied so we're going to go back in and I think the highest we can go up to period is going to be that 1.35 so we'll try to lock the voltage down to that and see what the temperatures are and see if we can even hit 5 gigahertz at that. So we're going to go to 1.325 at 5 gigahertz. Click apply and go over to system info to monitor temperatures. And it did that again. I don't know why the default. Oh, because we're crashing. That's why. And that's an application crash. So that's good news. Means maybe with a little bit more voltage, which is going to be at our max, which I didn't want to have to go to. But it looks like we will have to go to. That was just an application crash, so I bet you will be good to go now. <laughs> if we can set this back, there we go. Oh, and a blue screen. So it looks like, unfortunately, uh, this chip on air is just not going to hit five gigahertz. So our last known good setting was 4.9 gigahertz at 1.25 volts. We're going to confirm that that still works with Cinebench and then once we confirm that we'll move on to stress testing. Okay we definitely run into another issue or we'll just have to adjust voltages up a little bit most likely. Okay so we're at 1.275 volts. We're going to try Cinebench again here which will actually be running in single thread so we need to once again cancel that. Go into preferences because we've just been crashing, so that's not staying up to date. And we're gonna go for it. Oh, and another blue screen. Wow, so it's, it's definitely an overclocking blue screen. W E H E A, unfortunately. We're gonna try 1.325 at 4.9 gigahertz. Oh, and a crash right at the end. 
Holy smokes, I thought we were good there. At least for Cinebench. So we'll be at 1.35 now. As you can see, temps are rising pretty hefty though at 1.35 volts. Okay, so we have a completion. We scored a 15.14, so we're actually a little lower than we were at the 4.8 gigahertz, and this is most likely due to thermal throttling. And even if, so even if you hit, for example, in this case, 4.9 gigahertz at 1.35 volts, the cooling might not be up to snuff, and you might want to consider not actually pushing that. In this case, if you did decide to continue, what I would recommend you doing is getting IDA 64, and then you would come into here and do tools, system stability test, and make sure you check stress FPU, and then click start. Now, you're gonna wanna run this for at least 20 minutes, but as you can see here, like I called out, it's already throwing a CPU throttling over overheating detected. So we're gonna stop that. And just like I surmised on the original video, which was with NCE, being enabled is was just not going to be possible because it's pushing that voltage to 1.35 volts on air the 8700k is just not going to perform with that much voltage going through to it without a d-lid which we'll talk about in another video so my original overclock of the 4.8 gigahertz at 1.25 volts is going to be what we want to stick with from here on out so at this point, what I'm going to do is just essentially knock this back down to 4.8 and 1.25 volts. And then I'm going to try to knock down 0.1 until Cinebench fails. So we're at 1.25 volts, or we'll go 0.25 until it won't run anymore. And this is just called dialing in our settings. I don't know if that's what it's called. And this is just us dialing in our settings to basically get as close to the best performance that we can get out of this system. So at 4.8 gigahertz at 1.2 volts, we'll see if it'll run. So we're gonna click apply here. We're also gonna go over to the system info tab and just click run on Cinebench and we crashed. So that's obviously not gonna work. So at this point, we're just gonna hop back in. I'm not gonna open the A-tuning utility because I already know we're at 1.25 volts at 4.8 gigahertz. I'm just gonna open up Cinebench. And so you see there, even though we hit 4.9 gigahertz, we got a score of like 15, 14 or something like that. At 4.8 gigahertz at 1.25 volts, we're at a 1560. And that's really the importance that I wanted to show off with this on the how to overclock your system. There's a couple steps that really, really matter. And that's going to be start at a low voltage. For the 8700K, start at 1.25 volts. And that seems to be about the best setting. Once you've done that, just start bumping up your voltage. Start at 4.6 or 4.7 and go up to 4.8. And so once we've dialed in our settings, the most important part, once again, is going to be stress testing for at least 20 minutes or longer. You can do this with IDA64 or Prime95, etc and run the system stability test. If you really want to make sure it's going to be stable, make sure you select this stress FPU. Also, don't be commenting down below telling me that your temperatures are 50C unless you've run IDA64 and check stress FPU. Alrighty, so that's going to wrap up how to overclock the i7-8700K on the ASRock motherboard. Basically, once you've completed figuring out with a tuning utility, you can go into the BIOS and set those settings permanently and then come back through. This is a basic guide on how to do it. There are other things to go into more depth on, such as enabling AVX, as well as tuning in your line load calibration, which we did test in. Level one is going to be the overclocking mode to pick essentially on the ASRock motherboards. And if you really wanted to push it further, you could disable CPU thermal throttling. However, I don't suggest it, and that's why I won't ever show you how to do it. Now, the big things that I hope you guys learned here is that you're going to have to be patient. I think patience is the number one thing here. As you go through an overclock, don't start at a high voltage and a high core clock 
and then work your way down. Work your way up and work your way up between 0.1 voltage or 0.25 voltage and step yourself up until you get a stable overclock. Now, how did I know previously, because we've done these tests on the last video when we were reviewing the cooler, that 1.25 volts and 4.8 gigahertz was going to work? Well, I wasn't positive, but I have had about three or four 8700Ks come through the door, and that's a pretty standard, what I would call everyday use case that works pretty well or quite well, especially on these air coolers or all-in-one coolers. Now, if you hopped on up to a water block, especially a water block maybe with some VRM, so that's what's called a mono block, if you worked yourself up to that, then we're gonna start talking about different things you need to do. Of course, we're going to be stepping up to that, but the next test that we need to go through is going to be installing liquid metal on the 8700K and then re-pushing it a little bit further with this current air cooling setup. For now though, we'll be doing all of our benchmarks with the RTX series as I don't have enough time on this particular chip. It is running pretty cool right now. I would say max temp on the hottest core is 80 C. So I'm pretty happy with that. And we're about two or three minutes in. We'll let it run for another 20 minutes even though I have done this with this exact setup already previously. And I mean, that's what we're gonna be at. Unfortunately, I think when they decide to go with the 8086s, that the 8700Ks, the ones that people are ordering now, are not binned very well because the 8086 is getting all the good silicon. So in the past where I've gotten 8700Ks, they'll go to five gigahertz with this amount of voltage or even 5.1 with 1.3 volts. This is the state of the 8700K right now if you order on Amazon or Best Buy or anything like that because all the rest are getting binned for that 8086. You might get really, really lucky, but I highly doubt it. So if you're looking for that 5 gigahertz to 5.2 gigahertz range, get the 8086 as that is basically going to be an 8700K that's been binned for those speeds. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe down below, and I'll see you next Tuesday.